Hi everyone, this is Gavin from Gavin's Gadgets. This is the BlackBerry Key 2. It's both badass and it's both bad. So what's badass about it and what's really bad about this phone? I'm going to go a deep dive and then I'm going to give you my final verdict at the end. So this is the BlackBerry Key 2, the phone itself. I'll come back in a second. In the box you get the following a USB cable, some uh, headset headphones, not too bad, and a power brick. Um, you do get the SIM jack tool and guides there. So this is the phone itself, QWERTY keyboard. The fingerprint sensor is, um, sorry, the touch bar, space bar is also the fingerprint sensor. And as you've just dem seen demonstrated, it opens up very quickly. Let's turn that off. Um, so on the side here, you have volume up, down, power button, convenience key, which you can map. I'll go through it in a minute. This this lovely rubber back. I don't think you really need to use a case. Or if you're prone to dropping things, you will need a case to protect the screen, perhaps in the sides. Dual 12 megapixel rear cameras. I think that's a eight or five megapixel on the front. It doesn't really matter what it is. I'll come back to the cameras and tell why it doesn't matter. Um, but there are a lot of features about the BlackBerry that make this really quite good. So as you can see the um, convenience key when I pressed it like so it opened up a couple of shortcuts you can have up to three on that you have you can slide to get the, the hub um, and you can scroll through the different things and you can see it's pulled up uh, some of the notifications that have just come through and you can see that from the top of the screen when you pull down here, there's the notification. We'll just delete that. Um, and you can come down here and you've got various different options. So I've had to take my SIM card out so I don't get bombarded with notifications while doing this review. Um, but you've got take a screenshot, uh, redactor, um, various other and privacy shade. So what you can do if I run through some of the um, standard features, what makes it so good is the keyboard. So if you're typing stuff, you do have this keyboard. I have used BlackBerry devices extensively in my past, and I love, love, love typing on this. Whether I'm any faster than the on-screen keyboard, I don't know, but I'm getting quicker and quicker the more I use it. There are amazing things you can do with this keyboard. The first is you can map the currency key, which is this key here, and I have it to bring down the notification shade. There are options in the menu. You also have the this, this speed uh, key here, which allows you to activate the different shortcuts that you have on the keyboard. And you can have two shortcuts per actual key. So a short press, that brought Twitter up. Did you see how quick that was? Then what you can also do, you can scroll. It doesn't always work as smoothly as this, but you do, you can actually scroll. Then what you can also do, you can have a short press and that brings up Instagram. And if you're in a particular app, you can press the, the, the shortcut key and hold down, and that brings up, um, that's actually IGTV. That's just so that I've got on a single press is Instagram. And if I press and hold, I've got IGTV. And I have these shortcuts set up, and I'll just show you some of those shortcuts. So if you go into the BlackBerry launcher, it's, it's a really, really nice launcher. And I'll run through some of the settings that you have here very quickly. You all know about network, Bluetooth, and all those sort of things. The shortcuts and the gestures. So here, it's it literally says, long press, short press. Now, I have actually already filled out every single one, except I've had to take, these were actually phone numbers for people, and I've had to remove them just for this review. So I literally had certain people, literally one press that, and it will dial or text, go into text that number. Pretty good. So you can see that for B, BBC iPlayer Radio, um, let's find um, something quite interesting that you can do, G, Google Plus, um, and, or G's for Google. And you can see it just keeps going, Lightroom for L, and on L for here, Google Lens, Met Office, is, and Maps. So for example, it's literally just a breeze. So if you do that Twitter again, and you know, then you can literally go press and hold for long T, and that's Google Translate. 
So in terms of moving around, it really, really, really is fast. Now, if you look at some of the other apps that you have, um, <laughs> you can actually use the trackpad for games. So it's a bit of a trial and error, and I've only realized this after uh, trying a few games. So I'll just very quickly do this and continue. And you can see this one particularly works really well. Um, and I've got, where was I? I'm trying to remember the, the um, oh, I'm just coming into the, the uh, end of the thing here, but you can actually move it around using the keys. Now your, your mileage will vary depending on the games and I think something to explore, but it's, it's not too bad. And again, if you have a look at, um, where are we? I'm trying to find uh, some of the actual stuff. So you've got all the Blackberry, the calendar. Um, I'll show you the camera in a minute and talk about the camera. D-Tech, which is their security suite. So you've got all the Blackberry, all the Blackberry sort of facilities and services, and you have the hub, and the hub works really, really well. And here you can integrate everything. So all your different social media can all be integrated, and that part of it works very, very well. Six gig of RAM, it doesn't grind it down. I've got a lot already on here, and it works very well. Um, the camera, let's talk about the camera. So here's the camera, and it's absolutely awful. It's terrible. Um, you can change the settings, four to three. You have 16 to nine, one to one, or three to two. You can have HDR off, on, or auto. Um, you've got a flash timer. Um, here you've got some filters. It's got it's a dual rear lens, so it has um, two times uh, zoom, but there's no optical image stabilization on any of it. Here you can just choose your manual mode. So now you go back and you've got all your manual settings. If you want to change to video, you have to first of all select which mode you want. So you put video and then you can hit the record button. So there's a bit of a, an extra step required and also let's put that back to auto. You can have some options here in terms of um, adding a watermark. It does do 4K on the front and 4K at 24 frames per second then 1080p at 60 frames per second, but it's wobbly as hell. It's not stabilized at all. You can use uh, Google Photos to stabilize a video. Uh, you don't know how to do that. What you do is you go to Google Photos and you pick a video. So you hit um, stabilize and then it will try and stabilize the video for you. Um, that's how you do that. It's really easy. Just take it a bit extra longer. And I have actually tried to stabilize some of the shots. Um, to give you some idea, this was taken this morning. Um, there we go. Um, you may think that looks all right. It's okay. Um, you know, you can get an average shot, but as soon as it goes dark, I'm gonna show you some photos now. it's not particularly good. So now you've seen the photos, um, you see what I mean, they're not too bad, but they're not brilliant. Um, Overexposes and all sorts, a lot of artifacts, even in bright light. But you do have, you say, um, overall, um, it's quite a nice device, just let down ultimately by the camera. So just going back into the settings, just to show you um, the shortcuts quickly. So here, I did show you the keyboard shortcuts. Um, customize the currency key um, and you have three, three or four options there. 
um, view notifications and the comments key was that one there. Um, and then there's quick launch camera, which is quite good. So you double press the power key and it works even when the phone is on. So if we do that now, you'll see the camera launches. So that was good. Um, double tap to check your phone, three finger privacy shade. So if we do that and do the three fingers. So here you've got the privacy shade and the privacy shade, it stops other people seeing what sort of other text on there. And you can change the um, settings. So you can have, where are we? Um, just the, how much, how clear it is. Like so. You can do, and you can change how big that particular gap is. It's all customizable. And it's also something called redaction. So if you, if you want to take a screenshot of something, but there's some sensitive information, it allows you just to black out, just, just add a, a, it's like you're using a pen really, just blacking out certain amounts of text. And that does, that works fairly well. That's not too bad. And there we go. So you can see how that works. Just go back into the settings again. Da, da, da. So on the, dis, on the dis, uh, battery, um, it does, work very well has various different options when you go to charge the battery you have an option um, in terms of boost mode which is where it basically puts it into a power saving mode so you can just maximize the time you have it does have quick charge three display you can change uh, the brightness have auto brightness it's not the brightest screens it's quite hard to see but it does work better in portrait mode with sunglasses when you use it like that and my polarized glasses I couldn't see the screen at all I had to take my glasses off night mode sort of adds um just just takes it so it's it sort of and makes the screen amber so it's easier in your eyes should help you actually sleep wallpaper shuffle that's quite nice changes lots from wallpapers automatically and they're particularly good ambient display you can wake the screen up when you receive notifications i've got that off um, but that's games quite handy and you've got various actions here that you can do when you plug certain stuff in so it's not too bad in that respect um, and you've got all the usual bits and pieces that you see on a Android phone. So you really say you're buying this for the battery services, the hub, the integration and all the other bits that come with that. It does work fairly well. The screen size, if you're watching, uh, if you're watching video, um, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's not ideal. So just to, just to show you, um, oh, hello, super staff, um, just to sort of go to the library. And if I go to my videos, um, and we just tap on this, and you can see how it's picture in picture. Um, you know, it's not the full screen, but you can, you know, I've watched movies on this, it's not too bad. The one aspect it does have is an FM radio, so I'll just plug some headphones which go in the top here. And I'll pick the FM radio, and it does have RDS just to actually show you under R for radio. Where are we? Um, okay, let me just take it off airplane mode just for the, oh, I can say, All right, so it does and you can set your presets up and when I say when it's on, it does actually display the channel name as well, so, which is particularly good, so if I press play, there you go, and it, it does have the RDS stuff on, which is really good, um, the sound through the headphones is mm, okay, nothing special. Does have Bluetooth 5, does have all the high res Bluetooth codecs, and does sound good. So, really, if you want to listen to stuff, use your Bluetooth, it does make a difference. So, there you have it lots of features, and I'm so torn on this. In terms of moving around, getting from one app to the next, and using the keyboard, it's absolutely brilliant. You know, going from all the hub, the messaging, you can fly through this, do things so much faster. And then you have the cameras on the back and the camera on the front. They are shit. Absolutely shit. I have never used such bad cameras ever. And I'm sorry for my language. No, I'm not. They are so bad. It's a bloody disgrace. And it lets down what could be the ultimate device. They don't have to be good cameras, just a lot better than they are. And I just hope in future firmware updates there's some improvements. That even using 
if you have video and you still go into Google Photos, there's an option to stabilise the video. It doesn't always work. It doesn't always make it a lot better. And I don't know. It's okay. It's possible to stick a filter on. But compared to all the modern cameras of today, it doesn't really add up. Not even close. So don't even, and when it comes to uh, night time, it's a mess. So really, it's such a letdown because if you were a social media nutcase, you know, you could do your, snelf, uh, your selfies and share them, and you've got the phone the right way up to do your selfies, you know, and sh sharing with is fast. It's really fast to do stuff on this. But it's just let down. Blackberry have missed the trip thinking only people interested in doing emails and stuff will use this. No. Kids, teenagers, people that like social media will use this if only the cameras were better. But it's so good though. You know, if you're using everything else, it is really, really good. The keyboard is a joy to use. And I, I really say that's, you know, I'm split. You know, I would use this as my main phone if the camera was slightly better because the experience of using the hub and all the other services is so brilliant. But anyway, if you have any thoughts, if you're using it and you've got some ideas of how to make the camera better or um, you think I'm wrong, tell me or you think I'm right, agree with me. This is Gavin from Gavin's Gadgets. Keep well and I'll catch you guys soon. Bye for now.